What's happening, my people? What's going on? What's the deal? It's Knockout Rituals. Got a lot of good things to talk about, man. We had some fights this weekend. I hope y'all tuned in. Y'all got to witness what was going on. But first and foremost, make sure you hit that subscribe button, man. Yeah, make sure you do that. Put some comments on here, man. You know what I mean? You can share it, whatever. But, man, look, man. The first thing I want to get into why was Regis Progre fighting on Jake Paul undercard? Like, why was he on Jake Paul undercard? First of all, I'm not even going to talk about the Jake Paul fight. I'm not going to discuss nothing about that debacle. It made no sense. Thing about it, man, you got real boxers. Real boxers that had been doing this for a while, man putting in years, putting in the training, climbing the ranks. I mean, Yvonne Redcatch is like 35 years old. You know what I mean? And I mean, come on, man. Anyways, I don't know how these dudes ended up on the undercard to a YouTuber who isn't even a real boxer. I mean, he got his professional license, but he has yet to fight another boxer. Then you got real guys like Regis who have been doing this, who have been putting in the time, who have been climbing the ranks, who was in the tournament. And I mean, man, come on, man. I'm just, anyways, man, I'm getting off subject. I'm not going to talk about that. But anyways, so y'all know about Regis, man. He's cold, right? You know, he, uh, he was in the tournament. He lost to Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor, that was actually his only loss. And I, I projected him to win that fight. But Taylor proved me wrong, man. He's solid. So I'm glad he's going to be in ESBC. But anyways, man, Regis Progre is one of my favorite fighters at 140. All right, my other favorite fighter is, I got to say, Maurice Hooker because he's from Texas. So I'm a little bit biased. Even though Maurice Hooker got two losses, now I want him coming by way of virtual or tease. But I always wanted to see them two fight, Regis Progre and Maurice Hooker. And this fight... That happened this weekend with Regis Progre was a weird fight. Very weird, man. I know y'all probably saw it. He was fighting Yvonne Redcatch. They was going at it. And then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my man lands a body blow. Man, I don't know what happened. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. When I first saw this happen, I thought we was finna be on some Andrew Galata Riddick Bow type stuff. Because, I mean, he, it, they saying he hit him in the gr Man, look at that. Look at that. Like, like, come on, man. Red Cash deserves an Oscar. I mean, the man is acting better than Denzel in training day. When you see it from another angle, when it shows it from another angle and they slow it down, he hit him in the body. It looked more like he hit him in the kidney, like in the side. So I don't know why he went down so dramatically. And look, I mean, look at that. He hit him in his left side. That was a body blow. Look at that. And then he just goes down like he just got shot with a Hadogan on Street Fighter. Like, yeah, it was pretty weird all around. I'm not going to stay on this topic for too long because there was too many other good fights, man. So another fight we had, we had Tony Harrison back in the ring. He hadn't been in the ring in a while. Man hadn't been in the ring since 2019, the end of 2019, when he had his rematch with Jermail Charlo and ended up getting knocked out. But that was a long time ago, man. That was a while ago. And not only did he fight none throughout 2020, his trainer, who was also his father, passed away. So you know they took a toll on him. I mean, that he had been training him for so long, and now he's just gone. And then on top of that, he hadn't been in the ring in, in, what, a year and a half? So that's ring rust, what we saw. Nothing more, nothing less. His father actually passed away from COVID, man. It's really sad. Um, so I don't know who's training him now. I guess somebody else who was in his camp, but I don't know. I haven't looked at the details of who his trainer is now, but yeah. He did not look too good at all Saturday night. I'm not going to lie. He didn't look like the usual Tony Harrison. 
all right he got the job done or you could say the other guy got the job done because the end result was a draw but he just did not look sharp he didn't look like what i was expecting you know it came down draw some people thought it was a robbery some people thought the other guy should have won some people thought harrison did enough to win I'm actually surprised, you know, that it was a rule to draw because the way I saw it, you could have you, you could have gave it to the other guy, you know, just my opinion. Um, but yeah, that was a draw. And, uh, I, I hope Harrison continues to fight a little bit more frequently. Last fight I got to touch on, Demetrius Andre, Lee and Williams. Man, listen, man. If you saw this fight, then you know Williams put up a hell of a fight. It was not a walk in the park for Andre at all. Yeah, he got dropped. Williams went down. But listen, man, the boy fought his behind off. All right. So anybody who thinks that Andre can beat Jamal Charlo or Canelo, I don't see that happening. I honestly don't think Charlo can beat Canelo. Even though Jamal's been calling him out for like two years, I don't think he's ready. Not after seeing him fight Korobov and Adams and all those other fights where I was like, uh, I don't know. But I definitely don't think that Andre could beat either one of them, Jamal or Canelo, you know. But like I said, it was a good fight, though. Now, it was a very good fight. I, you know, that was probably one of the best fights Saturday. Um, but just let me know what you think below, man. And as always, subscribe. Hurry up and subscribe. I'm going to come find you, man.